Oh, good morning, folks. I've come in to find the uh, the hose pipe reel broken on the wall, and this very silly young lady is the culprit. Now, watch this. She goes over to fill a dog bowl. There's a tap right next to her le left shoulder. The stupid cow starts fiddling with all this stuff at the back. Right, that's just a, it's a connector to hold the hose reel on the wall. Oh, some people, I just don't have any patience with the amount of stupidity that they actually have. So all of a sudden she starts fiddling with this top connector, which she's lost. Oh, comes off the wall. No idea what she's doing. Panicking. She tries picking. Look, oh, no water's coming out still. There's a tap. You've just looked at a tap. She's absolutely gormless. <laughs> it's honestly... It just surprises me how bad people can be. And then she's trying to like get some water out of it and then she finds the tap. Well, well done you, well done you. And then like, off she scurries with some water having wrecked and lost some components to that. Jesus Christ, man. The stupidity of some people knows no bounds. So, there's obviously a clip missing somewhere. I've just propped this back up today, but as you can see, look, she's taken the clip of some type out of there, and I don't know what she's done with it, thrown it away. I mean, the tap is right here. What kind of goon? Can't figure that out. It's absolutely simple. It's put me in a bit of a mood this morning, actually, because this happened on Friday and nobody spotted it until uh, I've come in today. So let's just have a look. In fact, I put this bait trap here yesterday and I didn't even spot it. But let's have a look around the bottom of these casks because chances are she's just kind of thrown it, thrown it on the floor somewhere. We'll see if we can't have a look, a bit of a dig about in here and find it. But I do have loads of other things to be doing today not picking up the pieces from uh, some dopey bint. Hey, it's a day for uh, being cocked over, I guess. So, come in. This chiller's making a noise, pumping its arse off. Of course, to no avail. She's frozen right up, boys. Complete block of ice. So what do we do about that? Well, we turn the whole thing off. We let it defrost. And then we take a reading to see how, what concentration, should I say, the glycol is. So it's obviously not enough. Fortunately, we've got some monoprop there. And I've just literally taken delivery, which is why I'm a bit out of breath. Just taken delivery of this from Niche. And on here, oh no, different shives. They're not the ones I ordered. Let's hope that they fit. I'm sure they will. But there should also be some frigging glycol on here. Well, they're all good. They're good. Ah, paracetic acid test strips. I thought I'd give these a whirl. Something new to the channel. And then... One of these, that's Persid 15. So this should be monoprop glycol, there we go. And that, boys, was not friggin' cheap. No way. About 120, 130 quid for that bad boy. So yeah, I should really get one of these shives out and just, just double check that these bad boys fit. So, C-band. They should do. The C band. We use C band. I'm just pop an hole in this. Well, they look similar. 
we've just got to check them out oh yeah they're nice and tight so they'll be good in that type of cask and then we've got I can't see any of the oh here's a different style of cask that we have oh, yep yeah, they're probably a bit big actually but I'm sure they'll go I'm sure they'll go one of our branded casks back here Let's try it on this baby. Oh, I think they're going to be tight, you know. They're probably going to be too tight, these. But, tough tiddy now. So they're the C-band that we've just bought. They're the C-band that we use. Shall we go and measure it on the micrometer? Um, calipers, even. Yeah, so it's a good job we're not sending these out into wholesale, so... That one's 51.1, 51.2. Of course, this has been hammered into a cask. And then this one is about 52.6, 52.4. So about a millimetre difference in the overall width, which I think we can live with. I'm just going to go and get a brand new one of these and see what the difference is before it's actually been hammered into a cask. Yeah, so if I look on the label of this... It says pretty much the same thing, C-band, membrane, uh, looks red, LDPE, and then what we've got on this bad boy, C-band, membrane red, LDPE, uh, yeah, it says V10 Z band, plastic shard V10 Z band, get it in shot. Uh, oh, then it says 8x8 there, red 8x8, I don't know what that means. It doesn't say anything like that on here, it says 4x8. 4x8 on here, so let's take one of these and let's have a look at the non compressed version and see how they tie up. I don't know what those numbers mean, 4x8, 8x8. As you can see, it's slightly conical. So that'll kind of get us out of jail, as long as we kind of whack her in most of the way. We should be fine. So 52.4 on that. And yeah, it's definitely smaller. 51.8 before it's been smashed in. Oh, hold on. Ah, down at the bottom, 52.1, and this one at the bottom, 52, 52.6, so it is half a millimetre bigger at its widest point. What other differences are there? I can't really see. Any major differences? I'll tell you what, though, the red ones they feel a lot more rigid, so maybe they're going to be a little bit stiffer to pull out, which will be handy because these obviously they often give way and crush when you've got the shaft tool in there, and uh, sometimes they can be really hard to get out. Anyway, we'll see, time will tell. Bit of casking going on today, so we can give them a whirl, maybe. Right, I'm going to have to let the camera catch up a little bit. It's dark in here. Uh, we're in the cellar, by the way. And I'm wanting to insulate all this ceiling better. This is like a vapour barrier, which has since been breached. We've got insulation in there. Not a good enough job. So I want to insulate it to increase the efficiency. And in order to do that, I don't know what that was out there then. Something just made a racket. Um, in order to do that... I want to put these in a better position. I wish I'd relocated them somewhere differently or located them somewhere differently originally. We've got all this space in here. It's really quite dark and dingy, but there's a lot of space in here for storage. And if I clad those walls, we could put kind of some root vegetable storage up there or something. We've actually got a cable coming in from the street here for the flats upstairs. That's li that's power. That's the mains cable coming in. So we'll have to be careful to make sure that we are aware that that's there. But I'm hoping that these two units will fit side by side in this little section. There's like five mil clearance if they do. 
which isn't very good if I need to do any work on them. But in order to move them out, what I've done is I've disconnected all the um, all the coils. We've pulled them back and out. I'll give them a clean while we can. They're still hooked up to the beer though, so I'm not, I'm not introducing any obviously uh, air into the lines. We're going to keep them all hooked up, but it just makes it a little bit difficult. And then in order to move the cooler, well, we're going to empty it. Unfortunately, these have a little drain line on the bottom of them. Didn't even know. So, got lucky there. Just going to have to take as many buckets out as we can. I think it's going to fill about eight or so. And then we'll filter all this glycol back in because effectively it's all still good tackle. In fact, I'm not sure if it's glycol or water. So what I'll do is I'll get the um, meter, uh, the refractometer, and we'll have a little bit of a test. And if this is just water, I'm going to dump it. But if it is glycol, and then uh, it's not pink, you see, so I'm not thinking it's glycol. But if it's glycol, we might filter it and put it back in and put some um, bacteria side or something in there to stop anything fruity growing. But it doesn't look all that bad. I've seen these where they're absolutely green. So the difficult part was we've shared a back bar link with uh, two coolers here. So I had to take all of the coils out initially to lift this lid. We'll empty this and then we'll tackle this one. It's still strapped up, well, semi-strapped up here. We've got a couple of straps here that we'll undo. But then we'll pull that back bar link out and we'll see if we can relocate it. It's not going to be able to move far, but if we can get them into the corner a little bit better than they are, that's going to be good for space. Even if we send them that way, if there's enough length on the bar links, which there might, there might just be, then we can kind of push the coolers to the back there and we can have this for a bit of storage it's a start i suppose it's not ideal but while i'm doing the insulation here and i've got to pull everything off the roof anyway well it's a perfect time really to you know service these guys and just before the summer starts to really kick in we'll find any dodgy bits and repair them as we go and hopefully They'll be back in service before we open up today at three o'clock and the time now is about 20 past nine. So I've got about six hours to get this done. Let's call it five and then it gives it an hour to get down to temperature and dine out any creases should they occur. Hopefully they friggin' won't. It fits. So that I have just done under intense pressure uh, we open at 3, it's 3.16, we've literally got it back on, it's not down to temperature yet, they're both at about 12 degrees, but they will come down pretty quickly. So I freed up all this space, this was old coal cellar I believe, it's really quite manky, but if I board the walls and put some shelves in, it'll be fine for just storing cases of bottles and stuff like that, wine cellar. But I'm really chuffed that we managed to get all that hooked across onto the other side. Um, cleaned up. I'm honestly, I'm over the moon. I took this completely to pieces as well, refurbished it and put it back together. It wasn't working properly. Now, in fact, it wasn't working. We didn't even notice. Now it is working. I had to change the solenoid valve out. So hopefully that's not going to be an issue down the line. I shouldn't have thought it would be. Um, I'd like to know what temperature it says there, but I can't really see it without putting a light on. wonder if it'll let me... <laughs> there we go, so we're still up at about 20. And then I've got a... When it gets to temperature at about 11 degrees, 10 degrees, I've got to set this. No idea what it's going to say because there's no real indicator on there but I'm really chuffed I'll just take a step back into the cellar itself just so you can see we can actually get in there now before they were both on this back wall so I'm very very pleased and you know it's so much tidier that's a well one of the main differences it's really tidy so we'll let these chooch already down to 10.8 look and hopefully 
these will hit their temperatures sometime today. I need to add some more sockets here because I don't like having these hanging off adapters. Could find a better way to do it than that, but I'll just put another double gang socket next door. And we need three, so that gives us a spare in here anyway. And they're not pulling much current, but they're off a nice big beefy four millimeter square cable. So it's there, why not use it? None of the cables in this cellar though are following code. As you can see, that should be up there. All shit, really. But it is what it is. So the next job that we're gonna do is we're gonna drop everything from the ceiling in here. Not today though. So all these are gonna come off the straps, all dangled down. And then we're gonna put up some insulation and then we'll screw everything back up again. And I want all of the cables, all of the pipe work, everything on the bottom of the insulation so it's all user serviceable and we can get around it all. But there's bits like this, you see. There's bits like this that there's no insulation there whatsoever. So they can probably hear me upstairs. That's how bad it all is. So I wanna just get this all sorted. And then same in here bit of an easier run in here just got to pull the beer lines down and drop the light install the insulation and then pop the light back up might reroute those pipes as well to somewhere a little bit more convenient we are actually getting ready probably for changing these out now we're two or three years in two years in three years in I can't remember I mean some places will go without changing these for decades but we'll see might swap them all out send them through the back and then have them all come through forwards here so they all just hang in a loop in front and you don't have any of this in the way and make sure all of them are long enough to kind of reach the end cask so to speak so i'm going to get out of here now because i'm i've got the door open and i'm encouraging fruit flies in which is not good so in order to make the uh, cellar a little bit more user friendly, we're gonna stick up some lights. So I've got a little bit of 1.5 mil twin and earth here, some sleeve in, and I've just placed an order at tool station for four batten lights, weatherproof batten lights that are gonna go up on the ceiling, some junction boxes, and some twin and earth 2.5 mil cable so we can add another socket to that back wall next to where we've got the coolers. I should have Patras boxes. I should have Patras boxes. There we go. Some Patras boxes. And up here, I should have a twin socket somewhere. There we go. Look at that. I could just put that on, but... Needs a new Patras box. Holes in the bottom of her. There's a metal one there. I'm pretty sure I've got some normal, relatively boring ones somewhere. There we go. Oh, no. Anyway, you don't need to see me rifling for all my friggin' shizzle. Definitely got some somewhere. Push comes to shove, I'll just take that off of there. We'll put it on a new box. So there are no holes for random pokey fingers. There we go. It fits. So that can go in the cellar as well. So I'm going to jump in the, the car. I was going to say van then, but I haven't got the van. I'm going to jump in the car. And I'm going to go and get these lights and uh, other things. So this is the stuff. 10 quid from Tool Station. We've done 50-50. Half of it in there, half of it in there. And I've saved a little bit for in here, but I forgot my screwdriver. So I'm going to leave that there because I'm calling it a day, boys. Well, finally home, boys. And... Uh, before I sign off, I'm just going to show you my little radish patch. 
I don't know why. I just felt like coming out and picking some. So here we are. A couple of radishes. Some different varieties. For the end of the vlog. There's a French breakfast for you. How do you like them apples? Lovely jubbly. Anyway, <laughs> there was all sorts in today's video. Here's Reggie for you. So uh, if you like that kind of thing, then do the old obligatory valve wide open. And uh, yeah, give us a like and a thumbs up and hit the sub button and all that thing. And uh, just have a look in the comments. The link for the North Knots Business Awards is still there. If you've not popped us a vote in, I'd be much obliged. Thank you very much. Well, it's such a nice evening. Why not take the little poo machines out for another ride? See you on the next one, boys and girls. Cheers. <laughs> Dirty boy. Had to interject, of course. We've got some lovely bullets. These little fellas are early. Uh, birch bullets by the looks of it. But, uh, we're not picking mushrooms today, are we, boys? Let's keep on walking. If there's any more uh, postscriptum, I'll be sure to include it. Well, I almost called it a day, but this is interesting. Quite a big house. Just boarded up. Just boarded up. Crazy. <laughs>